Uh, sure. Yeah. You get us. Okay. It's recording. Okay, great. So um, just to give you some perspective on Dablin and why we um, had founded Dablin, if you read all the persistent uh, threat write-ups, all the publications about APT campaigns, uh, what you find are some very common uh, similarities with, within these campaigns where the um, attacker looking for persistency and opportunities for lateral movement will compromise uh, the Active Directory services. Uh, Active Directory is an asset that's exposed uh, to every endpoint. Uh, Active Directory is an asset that's exposed to every endpoint by design. So for a, an attacker, when they look to gain privilege, uh, any endpoint that they get on will expose the heart of the environment. Uh, this is the Active Directory. So the defender has to protect every single endpoint, whereas the attacker only needs one endpoint. Because in a domain environment, every connected user and every connected endpoint exposes the heart of the environment, the Active Directory. The Active Directory is where you can find the treasure map. This is what tells you uh, the assets in the environment. It's also where you will find the privilege. So this is where the attacker can gain the privilege to compromise the assets in the environment. So if you think about Active Directory, you should think about the treasure map and the keys to open the treasure chests on the map. Uh, this is why the attackers like Active Directory so much, is that it enables lateral movement and attack reconnaissance by design. Now, Javelin uh, sees an excellent opportunity to drive containment methodology uh, during the attack process by inter interfering with the attacker's ability to learn the Active Directory environment. So we complement existing security controls by uh, driving containment, uh, forensic and containment technologies uh, in the middle of the attack process. So we make a few assumptions uh, in deploying Javelin. Uh, most importantly, that the attacker is going to compromise an endpoint that's not detected. So this could be a rogue employee you know, who's hired uh, at the organization. It could be a breach involving malware uh, or some type of memory exploitation. Uh, could be a credential-based attack where the attack is authorized. The attacker has a user identity uh, in the system. Um, to Javelin, uh, our detection is not based on how you compromise the endpoint, but it's based on the lateral movement uh, after the endpoint breach where the attacker tries to learn what assets are available in the environment and steal privilege to gain access to those assets. So again, all of the detection uh, that, that we build is based on the middle of the attack process here. Uh, we find most security tools have features for the beginning and the end of the attack, but uh, very, very few have uh, features in the middle of the kill chain. Um, there's two types of uh, offerings uh, inside the Javelin platform. The first offering is the AD Assess functionality. You can think of this as an attack simulation for Active Directory environments. This attack simulation is designed to find uh, low-hanging fruit that makes it easy for the attacker to exploit the domain environment. We want to remove this low-hanging fruit from the environment make it more difficult for the attacker to exploit the Active Directory. This will make it easier to detect them. This is called attack surface reduction. So we want to, again, make it more difficult for somebody to try to exploit the domain by removing uh, dark corners from the domain environment that they can hide in. 
Now, in this attack simulation, we have features for all parts of the Active Directory. <clears throat> it's very important that we know that every user and every endpoint is the attack surface of Active Directory. This means it is the largest attack surface that any organization has because the Active Directory owns every asset under its purview. So for the attacker, they can go from one endpoint to every domain asset in a few steps. This is a very critical understanding and why we have features for all parts of the Active Directory, whether it's Kerberos, the policies, the servers and endpoints configurations, and the domain controllers. Um, so if you look at some examples here, uh, we can talk to you about the most common uh, methods of exploitation. I want to kind of pause at this moment. Do you have any questions about what we're talking about? Does this uh, resonate with you? Are you familiar with some of these challenges? Now, if you're muted, we may be unable to hear you. Um, so if you have any comments, you'll have to unmute just so we can hear you. And you said for now, there are no questions. And then to your second question, which you said, um, we are familiar with this. We are, yeah, we are familiar with some of these challenges. Yeah, we are. OK. So just continue. Yeah. So these attack simulations, these will run on a defined schedule. So you will get continuous uh, visibility uh, into these dark corners that the attacker may try to hide. And as these uh, processes continue to run, uh, if somebody reintroduces a vulnerability to your environment that you've already remediated, it will be alerted upon again. So this is a continuous look. Uh, into that attack surface so that you can always have uh, the, the most robust defensive posture for the Active Directory. The second uh, core technologies in the Javelin platform uh, is the AD Protect. AD Protect is designed to be an autonomous intrusion detection and containment system uh, where we employ technology to control the attacker's perception. Uh, of the domain environment and use that perception against them. So as they try to learn about the critical servers in the environment, like the database servers, the file servers, the privileged user groups, the domain admins, uh, all of the version information about the software that runs and processes that are available, uh, as they're executing this learning, we're controlling the answers to this reconnaissance. We're using these answers to allow the attacker to contain themselves. So as the attacker tries to learn the domain, we are controlling the environment uh, view. So we're using that view to allow the attacker to contain themselves. So as they're asking questions about the Active Directory, uh, Javelin is using natural language processing to pick up the attributes from the existing environment and perform an AI recreation, which is essentially giving the attacker a, a recreated view of the domain environment using the same attributes that the client has today. Uh, however, this view is not real and is a figment of the attacker's imagination. Uh, we use uh, memory injection to control this view. So there's no running processes on the endpoint. Uh, we do not use an agent. Sorry, can I take you back, Jason? Uh, you said the javelin creates a sort of view um, um, for the attacker to, to see. Is that like imitating the real view? Is that like a honeypot? Or uh, I don't know. Uh, this, yeah, this case. So the, yeah, the, the, the problem with honeypots is that you can't completely control an attacker's view. A honeypot is a, is a logically real false asset. Uh, this is but one asset in a, in a potential sea of thousands. Uh, so a honeypot does not provide a high efficacy detection measure. 
because it, it cannot scale. Uh, so it has limited resources, has limited scale. Uh, you, you cannot control a view uh, that an attacker has of a domain environment with a honeypot. Um, honeypot is the kind of first generation uh, deception. Uh, so deception is a, a tactic in the art of war. Uh, people often compare deception to honeypots because honeypots are uh, a deceptive tactic. Uh, but we are not using honeypots because they, they do not scale. So they can't be everywhere uh, in an infinite fashion. So honeypots, again, give you very limited control over the view. Javelin is using memory manipulation technology, which allows us to control all the attributes and all the enumeration from an endpoint of a domain environment without creating uh, fake stuff. So we're using memory manipulation technology to control this view. It, it means that you have more scale, it's easier to manage, and you have unlimited deployment capability, and it's cheaper uh, because you don't need all the resources. And we'll show you in the demo what we mean by controlling the view. We'll show you in the lab uh, in just a minute how that works. Okay. So just to recap, um, we don't have changes to the network. We're not a proxy, so we're not intercepting traffic. Uh, there's no changes to the Active Directory. Uh, there's no honeypots. We're, again, we're not creating logically real false things. Uh, we're manipulating the endpoint view, which is going to, again, give you more scale, make it easier to manage. And it's very, very light on resources, which is important. So we drive this from an application server uh, where you install Javelin. And we use this application server to also perform the forensics and containment activity. Once an attacker interacts with Javelin, you'll have a forensic process that executes. And you'll have some containment opportunity on the compromised endpoint. There is an ability to tailor this control. So you can tailor the control based on process ID, uh, user, or machine. Uh, Carlos, are you um, ready to demo? Yes, I got the uh, control panel back. All righty. Floor is yours. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Yes, we can see your screen. Great. So as uh, <clears throat> Clayton was mentioning, right, we're going to take a look at how the product looks on a compromised endpoint. So that's the screen we're looking at right now. This represents, you know, somebody's machine in the environment. I am logged on as a guy named Mike. I'm a regular user. I'm not a, a domain admin. I don't have any special privileges, but because I am authenticated to the domain, right? I open up the, the domain to the vulnerability of, of being attacked. So in this case, I'm gonna do a couple of reconnaissance commands, um, essentially you know, building my treasure map as I would because I'm on this compromised host. I, it, it could be that you know malware has launched on this host with a zero day and that's given me a command and control connection to it. Or it could be that I just walked up to it because it wasn't locked. Right, or I could be a bad employee. It, it doesn't matter how I got out of the box, simply that I am on the box. So one of the first things that I will do is I will start asking questions. So what is here in the environment? So this command here simply tells me these are all the domain computers that exist. And there's about 30 or 40 of them listed there. So 
I can ask hundreds and hundreds of questions, right? We're, we don't have time to, to do all of that, but this gives you an idea, right? Of, of the kind of information that I can pull out simply because I'm logged on to the domain. So I may decide that what I want to do is go after W10 CFO, because there's probably, you know, data that I want there that I would want to exfiltrate that would be valuable to me. So as I build my treasure map, the next thing right, I'm going to need are keys. So something else I might ask are, who are the godlike accounts in the domain? So I have 10 people that exist in the domain admin group. So if I could find credentials to any one of those 10, I could access anything I want up here of the 40. And again, I can keep asking these questions. Where are all the SQL servers? Where are other applications that have privileges? Who you know could give me access into any of those machines? Where are those people logged in or have they been logged in? And that's where I would get my credential theft. So this gives us a baseline of what the environment really looks like. What I'm gonna do now is deploy Javelin to the same machine. So Javelin is a web server that resides on-prem. I'm gonna come back and explain more about the console here in a second. For the time being, I'm gonna select that machine that I was just on, Win2K8, <clears throat> and I'm gonna say deploy Javelin to that machine with this policy. So once I click that, it happens very quickly. You can see it's already deployed. Because it wasn't a big agent or a big package that I copied over there. When I hit that deploy button, I copied a 35 kilobyte file to the Windows temp directory and we executed it. When we executed it, we changed the memory of this machine. So again, there's no agent. There's no process called Javelin. There's no service called Javelin. I could search the C drive. I would not find Javelin. However, the memory now responds the way we want it to. So running those same commands, Instead of seeing 10 people in the domain admin group, I now see 100. So in reality, the screen on the right, that's still reality. If I went to a domain controller, that is what I would see. But on the endpoint, it now believes this to be reality. So as an attacker, I begin to build my treasure map with incorrect information. Instead of seeing 30 assets, I see 300. And if we look at the original data on the right, you will see when I look at this new data on the left that it matches. So when we create the false data, or the mask is what we call it, we learn the naming convention that's in play as we create that data. So we allow the attacker to run what's called passive reconnaissance, to pull this information as he normally would do, but he doesn't know it's wrong. And I've surrounded him with landmines so that if he interacts with anything, we know this machine is compromised. So why don't we stop for a second, let you unmute. And do you, do you have any questions over what I've shown in terms of how we're doing this and how we're disrupting the reconnaissance? Five, 
We don't have any questions. You know, but I think the concept is, is clear. You know, juggling uh, creates uh, um, uh, an image that appears appears real, but it's not real. You know, and it confuses the attacker by. Um, is there any way we could have similar similar requests? Yeah, is there any way we could have, we could have similar requests? Because I hear that again. Yeah. Oh, the, I can hear me. Yeah, the nice thing is that we're not confusing the attacker because the data is real. So the attributes that the attacker sees about the objects that are being enumerated, this data is real. It comes from your environment, but the objects are a uh, figment of the endpoint imagination. So the attacker believes they're winning you know they believe they're getting what they need to to build their campaign uh so you know while they think they're winning uh they're actually alerting themselves on you know for us um so this is why we use the natural language processing it's to make sure that the attacker has a view that's authentic to the target environment Okay. Okay. So now from the attacker's perspective, you'll notice my screen on the left, it's been contained, right? So we've mitigated the attacker. The attacker has essentially given himself away, as Clayton's mentioning, right? And he's contained himself. So when I interacted with this reconnaissance data. In this case, I did name resolution on an asset called W10 ACE. That generated an alarm in the console, email or SIM as well. We copied another file over here, executed it while we were talking, and pulled forensic data from this host and identified that cmd.exe is what was interacting with the false mask. And so we contained that process. So as the attacker, I have to start over. <clears throat> I can't do anything with this command window anymore. I'm just going to get access to nine messages. From a security standpoint, coming back into our console, I have a new alarm I've generated. It's part of these six. So I have six red real-time breach alarms. I have 10 ADSS alarms. That's where we talk about your ability to reduce your attack surface. Going into the real-time breach, I just generated the alarm here, computer information gathering. So that Win2K host reached out to W10 Ace. That is the false asset that I provided to him when he did his reconnaissance. This domain controller is who told me about it. Because again, we're not monitoring this machine. The memory manipulation occurs. I don't talk to the machine again. I wait for a domain controller to tell me something's happening because really I'm protecting the domain, right? Versus the individual endpoint. <clears throat> so this is the same information I get in my alarm. If I want more detail, then I go to the forensic report. It's available as a PDF or a JSON. I have a little mini memory dump that shows me I had command exes, right? In memory, along with another application down there. The cmd.exe is in red because it's the guilty process. It spawned ping.exe. This process is no longer in memory, so it has a little skull. It was a one-time use. The CMDs are blue with a lock on them because they were mitigated or contained. If I click on them, I get more details like process ID, location, MD5. As I scroll down, I can also get context of the attack and see exactly what I was typing and what I was getting back. So you can see there I ran NetGroup domain admins, domain computers, all the way down to where I pinged the machine. Any questions over what you're seeing there within the forensics?
Uh, I'm, I'm afraid we didn't understand the current things. Uh, or, and, and then again, um, how exactly is this child being uh, manipulated? Data? So, how exactly is it able to do that? So when I hit that deploy button, right, I copied the file over to the temp directory and executed it. Think of it like fileless malware, right, except it's goodware. <clears throat> so we execute that, you know, file. It essentially puts randomized hooks into RAM around the Windows APIs so that when somebody asks these questions to take advantage of Active Directory, <clears throat> right, and there's lots of different ways to do that, <clears throat> we're hooked into it. The question goes out to the domain controller. The response is returned, but we intercept it, and we manipulate what's being given back to the screen. So that's how the memory manipulation takes place. Now, when you interact with the mask, this falls back on how authentication works within Windows, right? It's Kerberos. So on the back end, whenever you're doing anything, you're essentially getting a request at the domain controller for what's called a TGT, ticket granting ticket, that is then used to create TGSs, which actually give you the ability to, to um, access something. But at the very beginning, you've got to get the TGT. So that, that requires the domain controller's involvement. And we're monitoring the domain controller. So when somebody's basically asking for access to something that does not exist, the domain controller just errors out going, I don't know what this is. That's weird. But we know exactly what it is because we put it there. So that's what allows us to generate the alarm. Now, again, I don't have anything on the endpoint. So to get the forensics, I copy another file over. This one's 100 kilobytes in size. I execute it, and it gathers all this information in the forensic report, including what we're looking at here, which is a mini memory dump that's basically scraping memory saying, hey, what's here? You know, what's running right now? And we're putting that on the screen and capturing any kind of native shell when it's available, right? That's the shell content here because it's still in memory, what I was doing. So we're able to pull that and scrape that out to tell you, hey, here's what the attacker was, was doing. As long as it's a native shell. So command shell, PowerShell, Python, then we'll give you this when it's available. Does that help clear it up? Yes, it is. Okay, do you want me to, to continue or do you want to talk about it some more? No, uh, it's fine. It's fine. You can continue. Okay. So I'm going to change the gears now. Um, again, there's hundreds of different ways to access the domain. What matters is that I'm authenticated as Mike, remember? So now I'm going to use PowerShell to do some different stuff. We're going to take a look at some more things within the mask. So for instance, I could ask Active Directory for the attributes of one of those assets. So basically, I've asked it with another protocol called ADSI, what are the properties of this machine? Now, again, this is not a real machine. This is a false asset. But it's a virtual object. It has all of the properties I would expect to see. Right? It exists in this part of Active Directory. It's been logged on to this morning. <clears throat> it's running these applications. So when we create the mask, it's not just a name, W10Ace, we created. It's an entire virtual object. So if I was trying to do get more information without interacting, 
right? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be able to tell this is false until I physically try to fingerprint it. And as soon as I physically try to do that, I'm immediately gonna give myself away, right? That would be the same computer information gathering alarm. If I try to connect to the dollar share, if I try to port scan it, if I do anything with it, that'll generate an alarm. Changing gears again, this time I'm going to do more reconnaissance by asking where the SQL servers are. <coughs> so I can find that by doing what's called an SPN scan. And basically I'm asking it where SQL server.exe exist. And I'm getting this list. So it's not about having SQL in the name, right? It's about actually, hey, where is SQL.exe running? And we see here I have a list of 20 something machines. Again, this is all false data, right? I only have uh, one or two in my actual environment. This is a very small test lab. So if I try to go after one of these because they have GC information, again, I would generate an alarm. So again, beyond pulling this information, right, that we see on the, on the back of the screen, I'm going to need possible credentials to access what I'm going after. So to do that, I need to steal one of those godlike accounts. So now I'm going to use something called Mimikatz. I can do it in lots of different ways. I can run it through PowerShell. I can do the executable, which I'm doing here. It's not about mimikatz.exe here. It's about the, the act of cracking open LSAS. This is just the most common way that I can do that. Now, again, right, we don't care how something is happening on the endpoint, right? That's the AV's job, the endpoint protection. They need to stop Mimikatz.exe from running, and they will, this one right here. But, right, I put it into a new ODA, or I port it into technology like ours, and I'm going to be able to run it all day long with your AV running, right? You, you can't stop it. So in this case, right, I've executed it and I'm looking at the contents of LSAS.exe. That is right, that is a service that's running on this endpoint that's compromised that has the credentials to everybody that's ever logged in. So what I see here is the machine itself and its credentials. Not very interesting. I'm gonna see Mike, because remember that's who I'm logged in as. So right here, this is Mike's credentials. Right, Mike in the McDonald's domain. This is his hash. There's his clear text password. I could also dump his TGT. Right, because I have that, I can, you know, essentially impersonate Mike and access anything that Mike has has the rights to. Now, normally, right, what I'm going to end up doing is figuring out that a godlike account is on Susie's machine. So I'll have to take Mike's credentials and move to a common server that we've both been to so I can get Susie's credentials so I can get over to Susie's machine where I will then take the godlike account. That's lateral movement credential theft. I don't have to do that though if I had the godlike account has already logged on to my machine. So as I scroll up, I see something called help desk five, right? And there's its credentials, its hashes, its clear text password. It's not a honey token, this account actually did log into this machine, right, when I deployed Javelin to it. So it's real. I can steal this. The problem is, is once I steal it right, and I try to access something, well, that's when the domain controller is going to be like, this isn't, this is not, uh, 
you know, the right hash token, etc. So essentially we change the password as soon as it authenticates. And um, we also make it look like it's a domain admin, but in reality it's not. So if I go check the domain admin group, Here I'm asking via ADSI this time for every privileged user, so not just the people in the rooted domain admin. It's a better uh, command for me as an attacker. I see help desk five. All right, so that's all of my privileged accounts. That one is there. That is what I see locally here within LSAS. I can now go access whatever I want by stealing this account. So if I essentially copy his password here and then try to access, I'll try to access the domain controller. All right, so I'm saying basically give me a command shell on DCO3, which is the main controller, using help desk 5. Now it asks me for help desk 5's password, right, which I have right here. So I enter that in, but I fail. If this wasn't Javelin, right, if I was in your environment, I'd be staring right, at a command shell running on your domain controller. All right, I've owned you. I can do anything I want. But because it's Javelin, it didn't give me the command shell, right? And I'm actually running forensics now, and it's going to contain the PowerShell. Now we have credential theft using over past the hash. And then we'll have the same forensic thing we saw before. So that's the general gist of what's happening on the real-time breach side. Um, before I jump over to the AD Assess, do you have any other questions about AD Protect? No, we don't have any questions for that. I guess one of the things you haven't asked is... It's a bit technical. It's a bit technical. It's a bit technical. Yeah. Oh, we don't have any questions for that. <laughs> anyway, I think we understand, um, we understand the, the idea behind it, even though it's a bit technical. Yeah. I'll say the, the one thing you haven't asked is, well, what about the people that do need that kind of data? Uh, we have the ability to make exceptions. So I can, you know, say a particular user or a particular machine or a particular application is not going to get the mask. But 99% of everything you have does not need to do reconnaissance. But you can do exceptions for someone if they do. Um, so then the AD assess data is what I'm looking at now. So I've got about 10 things here. There's about 20 or 30 that we do. I'm not going to click on all of them, but we'll look at a couple of them. Um, these dark corner assessments are run against either the domain controller, the domain database, or the endpoints. So, for instance, LLMNR runs on the endpoints. We check it to see if this protocol is still on. Hopefully, you have it turned off, and you've turned it off through a GPO. So, we tell you what the attack is, why it's bad, and how to fix it. This is on by default, and because it's on, right, as an attacker, I can run another tool called Responder that'll allow me to do a man-in-the-middle attack and steal credentials on your wire. Um, this is something that you have to get turned off, right, because otherwise uh, it's just another mechanism I can use to own you. So we're checking it on the endpoint and letting you know, hey, you know, indeed this is still on.
So you may think you've turned it off at the domain level, but in reality, it's not all. It's, it hasn't worked its way down. So you need to fix it. Um, something that could be done against the domain controllers, DC net session enumeration. This would allow me to ask the domain controller who's interactively logged on. Well, getting that list of people just told me that they're all godlike accounts because you have to be that in order to log on interactively to a domain controller. So essentially, you need to run this script on all your domain controllers so that I can't do that as the attacker. Because again, it's something that's on by default. Microsoft has given you a way to turn it off, but they're not turning it off for you. Another example on the domain database side would be unprivileged admin holder ACL. This is telling me that this guy, regular guy user, right, who doesn't have domain admin rights or anything, has a checkbox buried in the possible things that he could be given called that. Because he has that, he could create a domain admin, a new one at any time. So this would be like a back door I would leave behind, even like a, an employee on the way out the door. If he wants to give himself access back later, that's what I would do. I'd create a guy user that you would never notice, right? Give him that right. So that even if you're auditing your domain admin group, right? Uh, you can see that my account was removed, but I can come in, you know, a week from now, log in with this guy and create a new one. So that's the kind of things that we're looking for, right, as we do the AD assessment to tell you, hey, here's something that should be removed. So if you can remove it, please do so and reduce your attack surface. And that, that is essentially everything the product provides, right? AD protect for real-time breach to the use of deception and AD assess, which is reducing your attack surface based on the configuration of Active Directory. And they're sold as one product, right, that you get as a, as a single bundle. Do you guys have any final questions I can answer? No, we don't. Okay. Well, I'll let you guys chew on that, and if you uh, want to discuss it, then uh, you can let me know. Okay. All right. That's fine. All right. Bye, guys. All right, bye.